Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to be looking at the timing gear of the Ford SX V6. We will inspect the timing gear and replace it if necessary and there's a few very good reasons for that. The problem was with the very early engines of the V6 is that the camshaft gear or tooth wheel was actually built out of welt and that's going to wear out over time, especially if the car wasn't maintained very well. And I don't know on this car because I just got it about a month ago how that had been maintained over the time. Later models of the V6, they actually replaced the Velt um, gear wheel with a uh, nylon wheel, which was a lot better already. So if the engine is maintained properly over the time and it wasn't modified, then this gear wheel will last a long time. However, if you have modified the engine or it was modified over time with a fast road cam, high lifting valves, uh, stronger valve springs and maybe even a high pressure oil pump, then all that is going to add up to that gear wheel and it's going to be more loaded. So it's going to wear out a lot faster. So now we're going to have a look on that and therefore we will have to do a couple of things. But before we start taking things apart, uh, I'd just like to have a little chat about the camshaft in the Ford SX V6. The camshaft, and this is a camshaft, um, is actually fitted underneath the cylinder heads. In other cars, you will find the camshaft on top of the valve. So that's what we call an overhead camshaft. This is not. So therefore, the camshaft um, has to be fitted with followers and push rods. So let me give you a little bit of a closer look on how that mechanism is working. On the Ford SX V6, this camshaft is fitted inside the block. So it's not an overhead camshaft. So therefore we need to find a way to, to transfer the change in height of the notches towards the rockers that are sitting on top of the cylinder head to open and close the valves. And that's why we have what we call followers. And this is a follower which is going to be sitting on top of that notch. And while the camshaft is rotating, you will see that this follower will be pushed up by that notch and then it goes down again. Now, that's one part and this is just fitted inside the cylinder head. But we still need a push rod and this is a push rod which is going to go inside and that's going to push the tumblers or the rockers on the cylinder head up or down and that will open the valves or not. So this is how that mechanism is working. As I mentioned there are different approaches to drive a camshaft from the crankshaft so the smallest sprocket is typically always on the crankshaft whereas the camshaft is actually having typically the largest sprocket. Now this is an example of a chain driven system that is very solid. Uh, you seldom have to replace that and while the crankshaft is rotating it's going to take along uh, the um, camshaft like so. Now other cars like in this TVR they don't have a chain as I said they have what we call direct coupled gears like so and this is how it's going to work. Now it's the top one which is on the actual camshaft and that's where you find the fiber one or the nylon version. To inspect that timing gear we will need to remove the timing cover and that entails a couple of actions you need to do. I have first of all removed the bonnet or the hood on this car. It makes it easier to work on because I had to do a couple of other things. And as you might notice, the radiator has been removed and I drained the system from its cooling liquid. That was because the radiator was leaking as well. But if you're going to inspect your timing gear, then you might as well take the radiator out and remove the hood. The next thing you should be doing is to remove the sump on the bottom. Then you will have to remove the fuel pump then you have to remove the uh, pulley on the crankshaft. And then there's another 11 bolts to undo on the timing cover and then you should be able to uh, get to it and see it. Uh, you might as well have to remove the alternator or flip it upwards and of course the snare or the V-belt. These are standard things uh, to remove and that's all what it takes. So not very complicated but it takes a bit of time. So let's start by removing first of all the sump. The first thing you want to do is take the sump off and just undo all these little bolts and I've done this before because I started to work on the oil leaks on the seals. So take that off and now we can continue with the rest. The next step is to remove the pulley which is on the crankshaft 
and for that you need to remove this bolt and then pull the pulley off with a pulley puller. Uh, but before you do so, obviously you have to remove the snare or the V-belt. This is the actual timing cover with the 11 bolts that need to be removed. And also the fuel pump has to be removed if you still have a mechanical fuel pump, of course. And then of course the main pulley on the bottom on the crankshaft. And first of all, now we need to remove the snare here. So let us remove or loosen up the alternator. There we go. There we go. And now we should be able to take the snare off or that V-belt. All right, so I will move it out of the way. The next step is to remove the pulley on the crankshaft and for that one you need to undo this bolt. Now that can be a little bit difficult. Uh, I'm using an impact wrench. Uh, that always works great. So you make it turn anti-clockwise and you use a socket 16 and then you should be good to get it off. Here we go. Now, what I can see is that there's quite some oil coming out here. You see that? So that actually means that this seal that's inside the timing cover is probably worn. And another reason why I'm having an oil leak. So we'll check this out. So now I will have to get the pulley off with a pulley puller. To get the pulley off, you will need a pulley puller and I already placed it on there and I'm using a piece of nylon in the middle here, hard nylon, so I don't really can damage the thread on the crankshaft itself. So uh, I'm using a three-legged one because I think these are better because I can't grab it from behind because this pulley is thicker on one side than on the other side. So I'm going to try to get it off like this. So let's see if it's going to work or not. Sometimes they can be hard to get off. Sometimes they come off easy. I think it's already coming. If you have to push too hard on it or really use a lot of force and stop because otherwise you might break the pulley. But this guy is coming off fairly easy. There we go. So the pulley came off very easily, but you can see, you know, the mess that we have around here. And most likely uh, the seal that we have here is actually leaking. So uh, we we'll have to put a new seal up. But now we can actually start trying to undo the bolts here on this cover. All right, so let's start. And hopefully I'm not too much in the way with my hands. Oh, these are fairly loose, so that's going to be going very quickly. So the fuel pump is now off and um, now I can release the remaining bolts. There we go. And I don't know if they put silicon in between or not. I wouldn't be surprised because whoever worked on this car before was really into silicon blue. I mean that's all they used on this car. I will have to put new seals up and I've got a complete kit of seals ready for this. But look at this bolt, how dirty that is. So we have to clean all this up. And now the real question is, is it gonna come off or not? And it came off very easily. So we were able to get this timing cover off pretty easily. Um, I expected it to be more hard. Uh, I was suspecting silicon, but not in this case. We had the normal seal on it. Now I have a seal available to it to replace it. Um, but also there is an oil seal right here in the cover, which we'll have to replace after we clean this up. But now let's have a, a closer look actually on the timing gear. 
looking closer on the gearing wheels, this is looking quite all right. I see no wear and tear on these teeth inside and they look perfect all around. There's no cracks or anything. So I've done a thorough inspection of this one. So this is really good. So I almost think that this gear wheel has been replaced once before. Now that's the one that is sitting actually on the camshaft. So um, I'm quite happy. The bottom gear, that's the one that's sitting on the crankshaft and that looks pretty much intact as well. So I don't think there's any need to replace anything here, but it was still worthwhile inspecting it. If, however, this would have been damaged, then you do have a problem and you will have to replace it. So if you have to replace the gear because it's worn, then you have to install a steel or an alloy type. You can't get the nylon versions anymore. They are very, very hard to find. So the aftermarket gears are all alloy or steel. And the only problem with those is that they're gonna make a little bit more noise. So they're gonna make a kind of a whining noise. But some people like that, some people don't. Now in my case, I don't need to replace it. So I'm quite happy. If you're gonna need to replace the timing gear, then you will have to take off the nut here and remove the timing wheels. And if you're gonna put it back together, you gotta to make sure that they are in the right spot. And therefore you will find a dot uh, and I made it wide on this uh, uh, timing wheel that needs to align with another dot which is on the timing wheel on the crankshaft. Now there are two on the crankshaft. It is only the one that lines up with this locking pin here that you should align. So the one that is just across the locking pin or the um, wood derf, I think you call it, that needs to be aligned with that one right there. So before you take it off, rotate your engine until this marker aligns with that marker. Not that one, okay? And then when that is aligned, take it off and then put the new gearing wheels on in exactly the same position because they also will have the same markers on them. So the next things for me to do now is uh, to take off this old seal here and put a new seal up and then uh, change also the oil seal on the cover. So uh, putting new seals up is very important and you can get these kits for top seals and this is the kit actually that I'm using. I got this on Burton's and you got all the oil seals with it so you can actually put that oil seal into the cover and then you have the blue seal or the blue gasket that you have in here. This is the blue one. That's the one actually that needs to go between the timing cover and the engine block. So it's always good to buy a kit like this. It really is uh, very helpful and not very expensive and it prevents leaks. I degreased the timing cover and I cleaned up the edges. And for that I used a scraper to scrape off all the remaining silicone pieces on the bottom. And then I also cleaned up this side here where this old seal was and then I rubbed it off a little bit slightly smoothly with this kind of a sanding block, which is a very fine sanding block. But now it's time to get this seal out of here, this oil seal, and put a new one in. But before doing so, I'm just going to blow it dry a bit. Uh, there's still some product on it, so uh, I like to work on a clean surface. Whenever you take off the timing cover, it's always good to replace this seal there. This is an oil seal and this is a new one. And I'm going to knock the old one out and put the new one in. And it's always good to double check if it's the same size and that appears to be exactly the same. So let's start knocking that out gently. And it's almost out. There we go. So you need to keep going around don't knock it too hard and at the end it will actually come out and here and here it is the old seal i have supported the panel with a piece of wood so now we're going to put the new seal in which should be exactly the same as the old one and it is and before i put it in i'm going to spray some what we call neutral vaseline on it that makes it go easier to go in Now this is uh, Vaseline without acid in it and then uh, we're going to try to put it as flush as possible and then gently tap around it until it is in. 
So the cover is about ready now to go back on, but first of all, I'm going to clean it up on the outside and get it some fresh paint. I'm going to let it dry and then we'll put it back on to the engine block. Uh, the sequence of installing is exactly the reverse of you seen taking it off. So we're going to first put on the um, timing cover, then we're going to install all the bolts on it, then we're going to install the fuel pump, then we go back to the bottom pulley, we put the pulley back on the crankshaft, and then uh, we put the sump, or the carter as I call it, back up. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm not going to show you all that in the video, it's, it's just the opposite. So. Uh, the only thing you got to watch out for is that you clean up the edges very nicely, um, that you remove all the excess um, silicon if there is any or any sealing kit and make it really nice and degrease it and then put the new seal up and then you should be good to go. So folks, uh, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as you can see, we have some snow and it was pretty cold in the workshop. But nevertheless, uh, we got the job done and in the next video, you will see me putting back up the new radiator and replacing the water pump. Thank you for viewing and please comment by all means. Bye bye.